France is known as the legendary Hollywood pilot. In the glorious early years of flying, Paul became known as the daredevil of the sky. Aerial Speed King, a pioneer of American aviation. Hollywood's ace. Mance has bounced off rooftops. Clipped the wings of a plane by flying through two trees. With a camera fastened to his plane, Mance made an entire movie audience sick to their stomach as they visually flew through tight canyon crevices that nearly missed the cliff walls and canyon floor. His title of Mr. Upside Down comes from an inverted stunt where he flew upside down with another plane as their wheels touched, and in effect, mirroring one another. Mance jokingly tells everyone that he often flies upside down when it's raining just to keep the rain out of his face. Once, he flew and crashed a flying fortress known as a B-17 for the movie 12 O'Clock High. This aircraft normally cannot be flown without two pilots at the controls, but he flew this alone because he didn't want the responsibility of possibly killing anyone else. He ripped the controls by welding an iron rod in place so he could maneuver it himself. It wasn't only air trickery, a seeming ability to gauge life or death by inches that made this famous flyer so outstanding. In his spare time, Mance was a speedster and broke many world and transcontinental speed records throughout his career, earning thousands of dollars in prize money and fame. In fact, Paul became the only three-time consecutive winner of the famous Bendex Air Races in 1946, 1947, and 1948. All his stunts were well thought out. He researched, calculated, and orchestrated each stunt. Mance built his own planes, weakening a wing here, strengthening a tail there, so his crashes were safer. By weakening the wings when he crashed through trees, there would be less force slowing the plane, thus reducing his chances of being injured. Mount said, your chances for survival and rescue after a crash landing depends largely on how well you succeed in making the airplane and not yourself absorb the shock. I've lived to walk away from numerous precision crashes because I've made it a point to learn what actually kills an airman when a plane crashes. For this reason, he insisted on being called a precision flyer instead of a stuntman. A stuntman infers recklessness and folly, whereas a precision flyer is just that. Precise, exact, and planned out in every detail. Albert Paul Mance was born in 1903 in Redwood, California to Robert Mance and Annie Remmel. There was nothing in Paul's background to suggest a future flyer, for his parents were teachers and had no association with airplanes. He heard of an opportunity to fly with the Army Air Corps. He joined and became their best student pilot only to be kicked out of the Corps the day before graduation. This came about when Paul decided to take a plane up for one last training flight. While flying, he noticed an oncoming train and decided to have some fun. Unbeknownst to Paul, this was the same train that the generals traveling to the graduation were on. The passengers of that train were terrified as Paul played chicken with their train and buzzed closely above. The visiting generals were appalled at the audacity of this mystery pilot and took down the plane's numbers. It didn't take long to find out who was responsible and Paul was promptly kicked out of the Corps. With this, however, he didn't leave empty-handed. He had his pilot's license. Mance had a sight set for Hollywood where the big money was made. He hoped to find work during this golden age of cinephotography. The motion picture pilots were organized. They called themselves the AMPP, Associated Motion Picture Pilots. Mance, a newcomer, could not get in. He was rejected by the president, Poncho Barnes. She believed he didn't have what it would take. Paul, in an effort to prove himself, went out to set his first world record. At San Mateo, California, on July 6, 1930, Paul executed 46 outside loops, beating the existing record of 19. Imagine hurtling through 46 outside loops that gorged the blood vessels in the brain with negative gravity. Wow! The number 46 became Mance's lucky number, which he painted on his fastest racing plane. This new world record began his process of the movie industry, seeing Paul as an alternative to the pilots that belonged to the AMPP. Still, luck was against him, until 1932, when a sequence in the movie Airmail called for a plane to be flown through a hangar up in the High Sierras. The AMPP had rejected this particular stunt as being too dangerous because of the crosswinds, winds that could cause the plane to lose control as it exited the hangar. Paul took the job and did the stunt on the first take, exactly how the director wanted it. The AMPP had to accept him then, and good fortune trailed him ever since. Because of his consistent accuracy and quality of work, his motto became, done right the first take. 
Paul Ness was a pilot on a super scale. He flew Hollywood's toughest sequences and cheated death time and time again. People who had seen some of his work would almost gasp as he spoke of how he could fly through an airplane hangar with only a few feet to spare. Then out he would soar. It was Mance who flew for the great actors in the late 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s, such as Jimmy Cagney in The Bride Came C.O.D. Cary Grant in Only Angels Have Wings. Fred McMurray in Men with Wings. James Stewart in The Spirit of St. Louis. John Wayne in The Flying Leathernecks. And Jet Pilot. It's a Mad, 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 Mad World was a favorite movie in the 1960s, where Paul Mance not only did stunt work, but also directed the flying sequences. In all, he flew in over 80 movies. Mance also owned special camera ships and rented his large fleet of modern and early day airplanes to the movies. He built his own camera ship from a World War II B-25 bomber and put cameras in the nose of the aircraft. He invented a way to get rid of bug spots on finished movies. He covered the camera lens with butcher paper until he was high enough in elevation where there were no bugs. Then he would reach out his window and pull off the paper and begin filming. He used his camera ship in the 1950s for filming many aerial sequences, including the newer big screen movies such as This is Cinerama and Seven Wonders of the World. Mance developed an air service where he would fly doctors to emergency operations or help the Forest Service fight fires. Mance was known as one of the taxi drivers of the sky. His Air Service logo was Fly with Mance anytime, anywhere. He had been known to fly famous Hollywood celebrities to Las Vegas, Nevada, and Yuma, Arizona for a quick wedding or romantic getaway on his famous Honeymoon Express. Mance would say, they call me Hollywood's Flying Cupid, but it doesn't make me mad, not as long as it pays dividends. A major aspect in Paul Mance's career was his association with Amelia Earhart. Mance became her $100 a day technical advisor in teaching her how to fly without the use of sight, or in aviation terminology, flying blind. There would be many times that her life would depend on her abilities to fly precise compass headings through the worst kind of weather. Mance instructed Amelia to never skimp when it came to safety. He was very deliberate in his research and orchestration of how to get top speed with less fuel consumption and of what type of radio equipment to use. Because of pressure from her promoter husband, Amelia departed from Oakland to start her world flight without Paul's knowledge. When Paul heard the news, he was furious. Paul had wanted to make a final check of her radio equipment and of her fuel consumption and to give her a list of optimum power settings for each leg of the journey, but now she'd be flying by guesswork. Amelia's early sneak departure had also left her unfamiliar with the use and setup of the long-range direction-finding antenna. She wasn't prepared, and Paul feared the worst. Amelia made efforts in Miami, Florida with technicians to figure out how the long-range antenna and radio system worked, but she met with little success and decided to leave the long-range antenna in Miami and flew on. In her rush, she left the very thing that could have saved her when she lost her way. In the 1960s, Paul owned the world's largest air museum of the time and called it Movie Land of the Air. He became the one-time personal owner of the seventh largest air force in the world. At the age of 62, Paul was killed while making the movie The Flight of the Phoenix. Surprisingly enough, the cause of death wasn't stunt related, but a result of a defect in the plane's structure. Paul was called out of retirement to substitute for a colleague who had broken his leg. He hadn't been directly involved with the construction of the aircraft, and during some test runs, Paul realized the ship wasn't sound, but because of tight filming schedules, there wasn't time to fix any problems. During a takeoff sequence, the landing gear of the Phoenix skimmed the top of a sand dune, and the badly built plane began breaking in half. It nosed forward, killing Paul instantly. Paul Mance made a true stand in history. He stood for independence and ingenuity. He overcame obstacles set world records, and developed better ways of doing aerial photography. He promoted women in aviation, and was truly Hollywood's pilot. Paul Mance will always be one of the most amazing pilots in Hollywood and the world.